So I support the uh, amendments that have been proposed uh, by the noble lady Baroness Miller. Uh, I do so because without the amendments, the customer is going to be guilty uh, of a criminal offence, however careful uh, he may be to check whether there is or there is not exploitative conduct uh, by another person. Uh, indeed, even if it were not possible in all the circumstances uh, for the customer to identify whether exploitative conduct uh, occurs. Now, of course, as the noble Lord, uh, Lord McCall uh, has indicated, the criminal law is replete with examples of strict liability offences, some of which are to be found in the area of sexual uh, offences. Uh, but I cannot think of any example, any other example, uh, where the defendant can be guilty of a criminal offence on a strict liability basis where he is a secondary party. Uh, that is where he is not responsible for the primary wrongdoing, which is here the exploitation. And that is what distinguishes this case from the examples given by the noble Lord, uh, Lord McCall. Now, to impose strict liability on the secondary party, that is the customer, so that he has no defence, however careful he is, to ascertain whether the mischief of exploitation, exploitation by another person, has occurred, is to make the secondary party, the customer, liable for the wrongdoing that is the exploitation which he has not caused. And that is simply wrong in principle. If the government take the view, and I can see some uh, force uh, in such an argument, if they take the view that exploitation is endemic to prostitution, and therefore any customer bears a responsibility and therefore the customer should be liable. Let the government come forward with a clause that makes it a criminal offence to purchase the sexual services of a prostitute. But if they're not prepared to do that, they really should not be putting before this House, before Parliament, uh, a clause uh, in the form that is uh, currently seen. Follow the